I'm looking through the computer shop and I want to find the cheapest, cheapest CPU money can buy. And I'm looking through and I'm looking through and there it hits me, a Celeron. And it's only 59 Aussie dollars and I think that's about 45 US dollars. But for this 59 Aussie dollars, can you play games on this cheap two core, two threaded CPU in 2021? Well then tech, Citizens, there is only one way to find out, and that is to go hit the Yes Mobile and go get this dual core and then put it to the test. If you've got this annoying Windows needs activation message and you want to get rid of it for cheap, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as 14 bucks, after you use the coupon code BFTYC, you can get yourself a legit single end user Windows 10 license today. Links in the description below. And here we are now back with the G5905. This is an LGA 1200 socket, so you will need at least the H410 motherboard in order to get this CPU to work. But it does have HD 610 graphics on board, two cores, two threads, and you get an included cooler. So let's see if this thing that looks kind of decent on paper, let's see if it can actually play some games. So we just finished up a few different titles here with an RX 570 8 gigabyte edition. And I'm kind of, I'm gonna be honest, already I'm a little bit surprised, a little bit shocked actually, that this two core, two threaded CPU could, for starters, it was playing CSGO absolutely fine. And it was getting over hundred average FPS, actually kind of smooth. I could get frags easily with this little CPU right here. And here's the thing with CSGO, and this is gonna be a general trend in relation to this CPU and especially that cheap price point. That is CSGO is free to play. So a lot of people play it, it's competitive multiplayer, but it also doesn't cost anything to buy this game and then play it online. So it was playing it really well. Now I will say one thing about all the titles I tested here and that is once I started benchmarking with the capture software from the GPU itself, it did add more strain. So when I was doing the FPS numbers, I was doing it without capturing the footage on the camera. So it was making the FPS essentially what you would expect if you were just buying the CPU and just playing games. So CSGO, really good. Then we move over to Fortnite and Fortnite's a little bit funny because they recommend an i3, which as a minimum has four threads. And so when, they, when I saw this i3 recommendation, I was like, okay, maybe the, the two cores is going to struggle here. And sure enough, it, it impressed me. It was playing Fortnite absolutely fine. I was getting uh, frags on this title with the competitive settings and we're getting over 100 FPS, which honestly is very impressive for considering going into this, how apparently useless two threads was meant to be. So that was that title done and dusted as well. Pretty good outcome so far. But of course we move into a title like F1 2020 and this is where it really starts to tank. Now F1 2020 they recommend an i3 at minimum so their four thread requirement for this game is holding true. If you don't have four threads you're going to get a very undesirable experience where it's just not playing the game. It's getting pretty much under 20 FPS. You're going to get a horrible experience in F1 2020. Then moving over to Cyberpunk, uh, we got past the menu <laughs> and we were trying to load up the game and the game was just essentially stuck in permanently loading up the game. It just wouldn't work. So the newer titles aren't working with the two cores, two threads, but then going back to the popular multiplayer titles, which are all free to play, it's getting good FPS. And even testing out Dota 2, we we're again getting over 100 average FPS. So here's the thing with this setup so far, and that is we tested it out with an RX 570 eight gigabyte, which honestly, you're gonna be overpaying for, especially the eight gigabyte model if you're in the market for a GPU, because all the crypto miners are buying them up. What if you just wanted to get this CPU and use its HD 610 graphics on board? Would you be able to play, even at 720p, Dota 2, Fortnite, or CSGO? Let's quickly put that to the test and come back. And now we're back with the G5905 Celeron right here with its onboard HD610 graphics. Now, straight away, I'm not going to, this is not going to be one of those videos where we're endorsing this Celeron by any means, but I came out of this, well, I came into this video, first of all, thinking this thing would be completely useless for gamers. Now I'm coming out of it with the sense of 
it depends on who you are. And when I do make recommendations, I do make them thinking about all different types of people all over the world, regardless of where you are. And that's the biggest thing. It depends on where you are in the world. A Celeron G5905 might be the only thing you can buy. And looking at how stock is and everything else in the world right now, things are totally messed up. Where I'm at locally, 10100Fs are now starting to run out of stock. Everyone's bought them up. So this seller on here might be the only thing that you can buy, like literally. And if that's the case, then it'll do the job as we saw in this video, providing you know its limits. And if the game doesn't support those two cores, two threads, like we saw with say Cyberpunk or F1 2020, then it's gonna be a bit of a hard time. And after testing out the onboard graphics for the G5905, that's the HD 16 graphics, I was left like kind of not disappointed. It's gonna sound weird because given the price point of this CPU, I'm gonna say I'm not disappointed in that the HD graphics did deliver a surprisingly a smooth experience on Dota 2 at the lowest settings at 720p. And also CSGO was playable as well, especially when I hear reports of people who are on laptops and they're only getting 15 FPS. This thing was like delivering 45 to 50 FPS on CSGO. But then Fortnite, for instance, wouldn't even boot up anymore with the onboard HD 16 graphics. So the G5 Dota 5, I'm not gonna come out of this video saying that this thing's amazing, don't get me wrong, but coming into this video, I thought this CPU right here, this Celeron would be completely useless for gaming period. But coming out of the video now, I'm thinking along the lines of, and this is the thing, when I make a recommendation for you guys, I always think about everyone in the world where they are and depending on the situation that's going on where they are. And here's the thing about the situation right now. It's completely messed up. Stock levels, wherever you are in the world, you may not be able to even buy something like a 10100F. Where I'm at locally, Surprisingly, the i3 10100Fs now are getting sold out and GPUs are starting to get sold out. And the prices of the GPUs, the retailers, they know that there's this demand that's coming in from those crypto miners and they're just jacking up the prices now to ridiculous levels because they know these guys are looking at these uh, GPUs and they're like, well, I wanna get those returns and it's only another 20 days at current rates. I'll get these GPUs. They're going to, it's insanely good investment times and they're going all crazy and buying up all the GPUs. That's from the crypto miners. And then the gamers are like, well, this GPU has been promised for X amount of money and now it's like 50% above retail. I'm just gonna wait. And so if you want something to proverbially wait out the storm, then this CPU could be a decent choice. And I will say one thing, the Ryzen 3000G, if you can get that for a similar price or even just a little bit more, definitely go for that. That's two cores, four threads, and its onboard graphics portion will give you a boost in FPS, especially at 720p. So if you can get the 3000G where you are, or even if you wanna go on AliExpress and get the 3000G for say $78 delivered, then that would be a better choice than the Celeron G5905 here. But if you are where you are locally and this CPU is coming in at the right price, say if you, you can get a cheap H410 motherboard and you can get a really cheap graphics card, even like a GTX 750, then this two cores, two threads is still gonna do the job. It's gonna play some of those popular multiplayer titles and it's gonna do it with decent FPS. So again, I'm not gonna sit here in, in these times and circumstances and say, this CPU is completely useless because I don't think it is. And so going forward from here on in, this reminds me of 2017, 2018, all over again, where I think the lesson here is, is that sometimes if you've got something and it can do what you want it to do, then you shouldn't be judged by other people about how bad or how good of a purchase that was. And in this case, if the seller on G5905 is all you can afford and that's the only thing available where you are and all you wanna do is play some Dota 2 or CSGO or some Fortnite, then by all means, go get it and it's going to serve you well. And given what's going on with this crypto situation, right? It's one of those things where I've seen it all before where the GPUs were all getting bought out in 2017. There was crypto fever. Everyone thought it was gonna go up and keep going up. And I remember I was on the phone to one of my friends and he thought Ripple was going to $10 a Ripple. He said, Brian, you're a fool. You've gotta 
get Ripple now at I think it was like a dollar something. And I said to him, I said, man, like I don't see what buying a Ripple at a dollar is gonna do for me personally. <laughs> and then sure enough, it was like a week later and I actually made a video on my channel at the time talking about the, um, telling because I was, I was in this crypto stuff. I wanted to learn it and learn it I did. And I, I was mining a thing called Zencash. And trust me, I made some good money out of that decision. That was a really profitable thing. And I sold the, the Zencash when it was like at a peak. And I actually made a video telling people to sell it. But you'll see now the same things going on. We've got the same wave of crypto rush coming in. And all these coins are coming out. And all these coins are going to change the world. And the world's going to be a better place. And so what's going to make the world a better place is if we actually start getting some real productivity back, which all the underlying conditions surrounding our economy right now aren't being truly fixed. And people are looking at crypto as if it's the answer going forward. When the answer's going forward, I don't feel crypto is gonna solve. It's sort of like crypto is a band-aid and this massive band-aid that's supposedly gonna fix all these problems when the real underlying causes are actually getting worse. So what I think I'm trying to say is, is at the moment, if you want to go out and buy the hardware to use it for gaming that the crypto miners want, then you're going to be paying a lot for it and you're going to be overpaying. You're going to be getting ripped off and you're going to be getting ripped off to the likes that you've never been ripped off before. However, if you want to wait it out, the proverbial storm, and I think things will come crashing to a halt sooner or later because you've got a whole system that's built up on speculation rather than productivity, as we said before. And when that happens, you'll reach what's called the bubbles tipping point, the bursting point. And when that happens, you're gonna see all this hardware that people were going crazy for, it's gonna go back on the market cheap because there's gonna be the sudden rush to wanna sell the hardware and get it off your hands before the person X sells it for cheaper. So just like there's this rush going up, there'll be this rush going down. And when that happens, then you can get your gaming PC with the higher end specs for a lot cheaper. So don't worry, that probably will come sooner than later, judging by at least the research I'm doing here. Also, one thing about this CPU is it's extremely cheap. It'll go really well as an office PC. It'll do great for a uh, home theater PC or a media box. And that's about it, cheap CPU. And sometimes that's all you need in your life. But in terms of its raw value, if other parts out there in the market, like the 10100F or the Ryzen 3000G are available and they've got decent price tags attached to them, definitely consider getting those options. Say with the 10100F, you get a dedicated GPU, definitely consider going that route or even say a Ryzen 3 3100 over this right here. You'll be able to play a lot more titles. Your rig will last you a lot longer. But if you do hear a lot of people hating on this CPU right here, it's probably because they might have something better and they might be used to playing on better gear and they just might not understand that sometimes all people need is 60 FPS and they need something and they don't have a whole lot of money and they just need something to get them through this stormy weather with a global pandemic attached on top. Anyway guys, with all that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also let us know down in the comments below what you think of the G5905. Do you think it's, like I'm saying, you think it's not the best value option, but of course in these times it is an option. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Bob Lecule, and they ask, so higher end PCs are the new build meta. And recently, like especially before Christmas, before things got out of control, I was building some RTX 3070 PCs and I was doing very well in terms of uh, flipping those PCs. And that was kind of, to me, that was coming in as the new meta, definitely. That was the new way to uh, flip PCs. That was what the market was definitely soaking up at the time. That's what I was finding. But going forward right now, the meta is if you can get a 3070 or a 3060 Ti, if you can even get one of these graphics cards, then by all means do that because people are just buying them up and the prices of them are starting to just, I've seen them in even in like the last two days at my local retails, the prices of ones that are available have shot up just instantly a hundred dollars. You remember this is a 500 USD card and in Australia they're going for like 1150 Aussie dollars now for an RTX 3070. So traditionally you can get these back around a few months ago, you get them around 850 Aussie dollars. So there's your $300 profit just out the window. And so people who are buying gaming PCs generally don't wanna to pay too much for that premium. 
And so this whole crypto thing is messing things up. So I'm kind of just sitting here, I'm sort of laying low because I am doing some low end builds, but they're moving a lot slower than what I'm used to flipping PCs. And I've been speaking to a lot of people, they're saying the same thing, especially where I'm locally. Of course, I know some people in different markets are having much different successes, but where I'm locally, it's a very slow time for um, low budget and then high end, it's very strapped for actually getting the parts and flipping the PC. So very, very weird market. I Again, going back to 2017, very similar story all over again. This was one of those times where um, flipping PCs was slow back in the crypto boom because everything was overpriced. And if you could get a gaming PC together for a good price, of course you could flip it. But even now there's this whole pressure coming in from the used market itself, from the older PCs that were sold in the last couple of years, they're all coming on the market there now. So it's not really a good time to be flipping used gaming PCs where I am locally, I will say that. But that's the balance and remember guys there's always a balance and i've said this in the past and people were wondering why i was going so hard last year it's like tech yes do you ever stop in 2020 i mean i remember my friends just asked me like they're like dude you got to slow down and i just said to them man when it rains it pours brothers so <laughs> i last year in 2020 i had the buckets out you know in full force and i filled all them buckets up so i kind of expected 2021 not from crypto i didn't expect the crypto thing to get so big but I expected the balance to shift in that a lot of people bought gaming PCs in 2020, and I expected that to come down to a downtick in 2021. So that's just the, the balance thing as well. Never forget that. So anyway, we've gone off on so many tangents on not just the question of the day here today, but also the video on the G5905. If you guys like the tangents and you like going off on these tangents, do let us know in the comments because as always with this channel, I love discussing things about just the, the market, what the real story is on the street. And that's just, I guess that's what I love doing. So I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.